Hello, everyone. My name is Jared Weissman. Today, I'll be presenting on the topic of gambling addiction during the pandemic. Let's get into the outline of the presentation. So first, I'll go into the overview of the project, where I'll discuss where the impetus of this project came from, you know, uh, where I'm a graduate assistant and what inspired me to take on this project. Um, then I will get into the themes found thus far. So I'll get into some quotes that I have found during my interview. And then I will get into the current connections I found to literature on gambling and addiction. And I'll give some thoughts on where I see the future of the project going. So now I'll provide an overview. Currently, I work at a uh, graduate assistantship at the International Gaming Institute, which has a smaller program that is connected to the Nevada Problem Gambling Center, which encompasses a group of several centers that focus on the issue of addiction. There's inpatient and outpatient programs. And what I do is I interview patients at 30, 90, and 365 days or a year into the program to see their experiences. Now, previously to the pandemic, these questions did not exist. And my colleague Andy initially conceptualized the questions. I may have made a couple uh, little changes, but they were at the forefront of creating the question. The question I focus on for this topic is I ask the individuals towards the end of the survey, which is initially a more quantitative survey, but then opens up to, to a more open-ended interview. Do you feel that there is a significant effect from the COVID-19 pandemic on your relationship to gambling and or your road to recovery? And the reason uh, we thought this was important has to do with the initial context of the closures of the casinos in Nevada from mid-March until June 2020. But the effects didn't really stop there. The pandemic is still going on, so this is ongoing research. Um, overall, so far, I've done, included in here is elements and snippets of 110 interviews thus far. I think now I'm at around 126, but I hope to get to 300 by June. Uh, these are preliminary findings. I am still working on this project and becoming more and more uh, caught up in understanding of the issues of this topic. So that is what is going on. So what I've done thus far in thinking about this project is come up with some themes that attach to the survey questions that I've done thus far. Specifically, we'll be getting into that first question where I talk about people's experiences and if there is a significant effect from COVID-19. One of the major elements that came up was the loneliness that came from COVID-19. One quote indicates isolating. Gambling is a thing you can do alone. I'm just taking a minute. You're alone a lot. It's one of those things that people do alone, and as a result, it became maybe one of the things people would do because you could do it alone. You had masks and gloves, but it was still something to get out of the house. It made it harder for me. This person is having a reckoning with gambling, its connection to loneliness overall, but even just getting out of the house during the pandemic kind of soothes that element of loneliness. Another quote says, the isolation was the cause for relapse and does not help existing addictions. This person was really struggling. Um, they had a relapse directly connected to that isolation. The challenge is less of us have less socialization. The escape that addiction provides is more tempting. If we have the balance and varied life, maybe we're not as tempted. We're all little nuts and the casino is an escape and smoke a cigar in there too. This person directly connects sort of their identity and idea of addiction to this issue of having less socialization, not necessarily directly here, but we were talking about the pandemic, but they talked about the addiction feeding into that need for socialization and gambling handling that sort of issue. 
The next theme that came up was financials, woes, stress, and anxiety connected to the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the quotes indicates, yes, because I got laid off because of the pandemic. It was the instigator of the financial crisis. I would have never gone. My income took a cut, but my gambling stayed the same or got worse because of free time. No money to take care of what I needed, so it snowballed. The job loss because of the pandemic was an instigator related to the rock bottom to seek help. This kind of indicates that there's positives and negatives that come up because of the pandemic. This person hit a terrible element of their life with the rock bottom, but they were able to kind of have that moment of clarity and find an ability to get the help they needed uh, with less money coming through with the pandemic. I don't know. It's, you know, I made a lot of things stressful and gambling is how I deal with most of my problems. Throw some money in the machine. That's how I cope with it. It's been a stressful couple of years for sure. Another person said, 100% yes. I stopped gambling in 2019, then um, the pandemic hit and struck home. I was working and the anxiety picked up, and I started gambling to go up uh, to deal with some of the previous issues. Nothing helped much except to go out and gambling. I was just, I felt trapped. My head was spinning, spinning at home. This person seems like the pandemic really affected them. And the anxiety picked up, and the way they dealt with it was to go out and gamble. Absolutely. I was dry for a year, then the pandemic hit. They said you could go play. This is ironic. I didn't play for 12 months. Something in your brain says it's not so bad. I started to play. In three months, I played. I did so much damage. Now you come in, can't come out, and now I can. I tried to make amends, and it was worse. It's been so bad. This is something that... We'll talk more about in the next slide, but because the casinos closed down, there was that shutdown and people not able to go out and gamble in person. Once they did, a lot of the participants I did talk to would go back out and either go on binges or gamble just as much as before. The next topic has to do specifically with the casino shutdown. One person said COVID actually helped the gambling because the stuff would shut down. Another person said, the best thing that happened is when the casinos closed. When they opened, I came back. In general, when I talked to people, it was very rare to find people that after the pandemic and things closed down, they wouldn't go back into the, the gambling, even if they hadn't gambled online. Uh, yes, in that it affected my road way from recovery. It pushed me over the edge. It elevated gambling. It's always been compulsive. It's just the focus was so intense on getting away from the world that I fell into online poker, which is so addictive. So yeah, the pandemic exacerbated it. It was actually very rare to find people that got into online gambling from my discussions or people rather admitting they got into online gambling during the shutdown. Um, so I feel I do need to do some more research on that element of online versus in-person and the elements uh, contributing to those addictions. Another person said, yeah, let me explain this. First of all, the casinos closed for a long time. The stimulus money and those things made a difference. But unfortunately, when they opened, I went in and went on a binge. I was one of the first 10 people. 9 a.m., they opened, and I was waiting at the pepper mill. There went my stimulus money. This person directly talks about the stimulus money received from COVID-19 going into the gambling. That sort of thing of going back on a binge once things reopen. So for the final slide, I'd like to get into the future steps and connections to literature that I see. One major connection to literature I saw was the idea of collective trauma. COVID-19 as this collective trauma and collective trauma has to do with a major connecting event between people that affects people in different ways, but in a way provides damage, trauma, issues, and it's an ongoing trauma. And I think that's very compelling to this issue of gambling addiction as trauma directly ties into gambling addiction. Lepinick and Grant 2015 found that it intersected with the issue. It may not have exacerbated. But they certainly are connected problems. Overall, I need to add more themes and integrate some more quotes into the project. And I need to get a better overall understanding of the different interpretations of gambling as an addiction. I'm still learning about this topic. I'm not classically trained in the issue, but I think I've definitely made some progress. I want to thank you all for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the projects here today.